Verily, all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. We praise Him, we seek His assistance, and we ask for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Him from the evils of ourselves. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. Whomsoever He misguides, none can guide. And we send abundant salutations upon His beloved Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Asleem and Kathira. Thereafter, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the blessings that He has bestowed upon this blessed Ummah. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, blessings that are unrestricted as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you could never restrict, restrict them. To proceed brothers and sisters in Islam, over the course of the past 10 to 12 months, we have had two big incidents that have shook the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two incidents that have changed the way the average Muslim thinks and perceives the world. Two incidents that have made us all become stronger in our faith and closer to our Lord Allah Azza wa Jal. The first of these two incidents is that which has occurred and is still ongoing in the beloved lands of Al-Aqsa. Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Masjid Al-Aqsa and uplift the oppression from its people. Ameen. The second incident being that which occurred not so long ago in the homeland of many of us who are here today, and that is the land of Bangladesh. How thousands upon thousands of our young brothers and sisters were brutally murdered in broad daylight. For what reason? For merely asking for their rights to be restored. And wallahi, if one denies these atrocities that have happened both in Bangladesh and the lands of Al-Aqsa, then we say to them, you may hide behind your media channels, you may try and twist the narrative, but we say, a nation whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on their side will never be fooled, and you may get your way in this worldly life, but by Allah, be ready for the questioning in the next life. And we say to all of the oppressors out there, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And fear that day when you will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But brothers and sisters, through such turmoil, through times of trials and tribulations, we as Muslims need to try and look at the positives that we can get out of any and every situation we are in. And subhanallah, wallahi, what is happening in the Muslim ummah today from the torture and killing of innocent Muslims only because of their identity, it reminds us of what happened to the beloved family of Ammar bin Yasi radiallahu anhu. It reminds us of the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam directed to the family of Al Yasir when he saw them going through such torture from the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said to them, Sabran al Yasir fa inna mawa'idakum al jannah. Patience, O family of Yasir, for indeed your final abode is paradise, Allahu Akbar. And we say to the family of those that have lost loved ones through these just unjust killings. Be patient and know that your loved ones are in a far better place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us all patience. Ameen. Now my brothers and sisters in Islam, if there was one lesson we have learned from these two incidents that have occurred throughout the past year, it is the power of unity. Subhanallah, because of our unity, we have managed to change the online false narrative with the situation unfolding in Gaza. All the news channels with their billions of dollars being spent to spread, spread hatred, to spread false information are being disregarded by the masses and even those that generally side against the Muslims are starting to see the nonsense and are calling out the outrageous behavior. Because of unity, brothers and sisters, the students of Bangladesh, a minority, a group with had nothing to defend themselves yet, Due to their unity, they have managed to bring about change in a country which has been ever so in need of change, Allahu Akbar. And it really and truly makes us think, just imagine, if we become more united as an ummah, what achievements, what progression we can make, subhanAllah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the emphasis of unity is not something new. It is not something alien to this great ummah. It is an amrun ilahiyun, divine command, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this ummah in his book wherein he says, وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, united and do not be divided. 
and to uphold this grand, great divine command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after migrating to Medina, one of the key areas he focused on was uniting the hearts of the believers. And most specifically, between the Ansar and Muhajirun. And such was the impact of this emphasis on unity by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers and sisters, that the Ansar were ready to sacrifice everything and anything for their brothers and sisters to keep the unity and to keep the bond intact. It has been mentioned that when the Muhajirun reached Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established the bond of brotherhood between two famous companions, Abdul Rahman from the Muhajirun and Sa'ad ibn Abi Rabi' from Al Ansar. So once Sa'ad said to Abdul Rahman that I am the richest of all the Ansar. So I want to divide my property between us and I have two wives. So see which of the two you like and tell me so that I may divorce her. And when she finishes her prescribed period, I, I will divorce her, then you may marry her. And in return, Abdul Rahman replied that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family and your property for you. And then he asked for the marketplace and he went to the marketplace. He made his own money and he got married. But the moral of the incident is how ready they were to sacrifice whatever they had for their brothers to uphold the unity and brother brotherhood. They saw their brothers and sisters in Islam as their own. They treated their brothers and sisters in Islam as their own flesh and blood. In another narration, it mentions that once a poor man from amongst the companions came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complaining about hunger. And because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not have anything to offer, he asked the companions around him, Man yudifuhu hadihi layla? Who will host this man as a guest tonight? And one of the Ansar, he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I will do so. So then he went back home and he asked his wife, Hal عندك شيء? Have you got anything to offer this man? She said, لا إلا قوت سبياني. That we do not have anything in this house except a little food for the children. And what did the Sahabi reply back to his wife? He said, keep the children busy with something. And when they ask for food, put them to sleep. When the guest enters, extinguish the light and give him the impression that we are also eating. So they sat down and the guest ate and they passed the night hungry. When they came to the Prophet ﷺ in the morning, he said to them, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admired what you did with your, with your guests last night, Allahu Akbar. Such a beloved action, such a great sacrifice for their brother in need that some of the Mufassirun have said due to this incident, the following verses from Surah Hashr were revealed. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّعُ الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, and those who before them had homes in Al Medina, i.e., the Ansar, and had adopted the faith, loved those that migrate to them, i.e., the Muhajirun, and have no jealousy in their hearts for that which they have been given. And the Ansar give the Muhajirun preference over themselves, even though they were in need of that. Brothers and sisters in Islam, such was the sacrifice of those that came before us. And such was the unity amongst the companions. Ridwanullahi alayhim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Ameen. And due to the unity and brotherhood amongst them, they were if able to defeat armies upon armies, nations upon nations, even though they were such less in number. Take the example of Battle of Badr. Just over 300 men in the Muslim army against a, an army of over a thousand. But yet the Muslims still overcame such a large army, not because they had stronger soldiers, not because they had more weapons, because they were united. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in a hadith, Yadullahi ma'al jama'ah. That the hand of Allah is with the united group, i.e. meaning the help of Allah will definitely come with the group that is united. But brothers and sisters in Islam, we could sit here all day lecturing one another about the importance of unity and brotherhood and narrate stories and incidents from the past. But what next? How do we achieve this unity so we can thrive as an ummah of the Prophet Muhammad What practical steps can we take to implement this divine command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being united? 
For this, dear brothers and sisters, there are certain things we must do. An action plan is required and for this, we want to share some practical steps. An action plan to achieve this ever so needed unity amongst the ummah, insha'Allah. Firstly, al-i'tisam bi hablillah. Holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the most important and clear command in the Quran for unity is in Surah Al Imran, verse 103, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, united together and do not differ. Allah begins the verse with the first shart, the first condition of unity, and that is holding on to the rope of Allah azza wa jalla. So what is the rope of Allah, one may ask. Many of the Mufassirun have explained that it is the Qur'an. And some have said it is referring to Al-Wahyayn, the two primary sources for Muslims, and that is the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Brothers and sisters, we need to analyze our own selves. We need to ask ourselves, how connected are we to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahi, much of the disunity amongst the ummah is because of how far and how distant we are from these two sources. And we live in such a strange period of time that when the Quran and Sunnah is mentioned, we have those amongst us, they have some sort of allergic reaction to these terms. We have those amongst us that associate the use of these two words with certain groups and sects. But really and truly brothers and sisters, Shouldn't it be that the Qur'an and Sunnah is all what we're thinking about? Shouldn't it be that before doing any action, we ask if that action is rooted and found within the Qur'an and Sunnah? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْن لَن تَضِلُّ مَا تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَسُنَّةَ نَبِيهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I have left two matters with you. As long as you hold to them, you will not go the wrong way. They are the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We beg for unity brothers and sisters, but yet we are disunited from the words of Allah. We beg for unity, yet we are disunited from the speech and actions of his beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu al-Musta'an. So first and most importantly, the most important step in achieving unity is improving ourselves. Be Returning back to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, reconnecting with the Qur'an and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Step two in achieving unity is overlooking the minor differences and focusing on that which we all agree upon. Brothers and sisters, I think it's very important we address this point in detail as we see this as one of the biggest hurdles for creating unity amongst this generation of Muslims. And before we get into this point in further detail, we need to establish that unity does not mean equality. Unity does not mean that we all have to be the same. Unity does not mean we all have to follow one school of thought. Unity does not mean we have to all pray in one masjid. Unity, brothers and sisters, means that we can all work together regardless of our differences. SubhanAllah, before moving to London, whilst living in the city of Newcastle, where we don't really have many masajid, one of the things that many of us fell victim to was we used to describe Masajid based on the ethnicity of the committee, uh, committee members. We call the masjid the Turkish masjid, the Pakistani masjid, the Bengali masjid, the Arabic masjid, and so on and so forth. And subhanAllah, this is so normal for much of the community to describe a certain masjid in a certain way. The approach of naming and labeling itself is a core problem. It is one of the reasons why communities are isolated and divided amongst one another. But this type of behavior, brothers and sisters, is not restricted to the masajid or to ethnicities, but it goes far beyond that. Many of us may be from the same ethnicity. We may attend the same congregation, but we do not see eye to eye. We can't stand one another because why? We pray differently. And this may seem far-fetched, but wallahi, this is the situation of many from amongst us. I recall watching a video a few, back, a few weeks back of a man praying in a congregation and as soon as the Imam finished Surah Al-Fatiha, he was the only one to say the Amin loudly and SubhanAllah, whilst in prayer, the man that was standing next to him, he broke his salah and started to beat this man up. Why? Because he prayed differently? Because he followed a different school of thought? Another incident worth mentioning and I'm sure many of the uncles sitting here will be witness to this and that is the great war that used to happen in our village in Bangladesh and that is the, the, the war between the Dhad and the Dhad. 
Those that recite the letter Dad, like a Dad, and those that recite it like a Dha. And some have gone to such an extent that there has been all out wars because of this. Fighting over petty things. And though it might sound funny and unreal, brothers and sisters, the sad reality is what I am saying is real. What I am saying is an ongoing active problem within this ummah. We are so focused on the micro issues and shaitan has made us believe that our deen, our success revolves around these secondary matters whilst he and his army are busy infiltrating the Muslim countries one after another. We need to wake up as an ummah, brothers and sisters, for indeed the success of this nation is based on our cooperation with one another, our unity and our brotherhood. And as time is limited, we will discuss one more point to conclude this topic for today's khutbah insha'Allah and that is the importance of knowing one another's rights and not just knowing it but upholding it too upholding one's rights brothers and sisters creates a great bond and love between one another and this helps in achieving the unity we all desperately need and our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said he, he mentioned many a hadith one hadith worth mentioning he says that there are six rights of a Muslim upon a Muslim. When you meet him, greet him. When he invites you, respond to him. When he seeks counsel, give him advice. When he sneezes and praises Allah, say to him, Ya Allah, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy on you. When he is sick, visit him. When he dies, follow his funeral. These rights mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brothers and sisters, may seem very, very generic and in insignificant to some but if we were to analyze every right mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will realize how much this all contributes to something far greater, something far more important, and that is unity. Every time we say salam to someone, those who we know and we do not know, you are spreading peace. You are building a bond with one another and you are uniting the souls. Every time you go to visit that uncle from the masjid who is on a hospital bed, you are giving that uncle a reason to pray for you. A reason to connect with you when he next sees you at the masjid. Isn't this bonding and creating unity, brothers and sisters? And like that, every right mentioned in this hadith has an everlasting impact on individuals, on the society as a whole. And through this method of upholding each other's rights, we really achieve one of the greater maqasid of the sharia. Ah. One of the greater objectives of the Islamic sharia, ah, and that is al-ukhuwa al islamiya Islamic brotherhood and unity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us all united. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us all in the next life with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just as he has united us here today. Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the affairs for our brothers and sisters in Bangladesh easy for them. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa nisa'il al-mu'minina fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الحكيم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضى عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم بكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين على الحق يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح ذات بينهم وهديهم سبل السلام وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم انصر دينك وكتاب وكتابك وسنة نبيك يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم ارفع الظلم عن كل مظلوم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحرمنا من رحمتك يوم نلقاك يوم لا رحمة إلا رحمتك اللهم كن لأهل فلسطين عونا ونصيرا وبدل خوفهم أمنا اللهم اجعل لأهل فلسطين النصرة والعزة والغلبة والقوة والهيبة
اللهم انصر أهل الفلسطين وثبت أقدامهم اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى واجبر كسرهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم برحمتك يا رب العالمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذن الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعم يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة